your family and loved ones who are here tonight. Um, as Dennis said, I might look familiar to some of you. For some of you, you know me as Mrs. Miller from High Point. I was your kindergarten teacher. Or some of you might have just seen me in the halls walking my class, walking backwards, walking my class to PE or lunch. Um, for others of you, you know me as um, Mason or Ryland's mom. Parents, I feel your pain tonight. My daughter graduated in 2020 and my son graduated last year in 2021. For others, you know me as the cheering mom. You might have seen me at marching band or cross country or track or ROTC competitions. And still others of you know me as Miss Lisa. I was your small group leader at church or maybe just the crazy lady running around taking pictures of you for social media. Um, and anyway, you're probably wondering why I'm the one who is giving this message tonight. Well, believe it or not, it all started last year on this night when I came here for my son's baccalaureate. And I sat and watched everything, and when I went to bed that night, God woke me up out of my sleep and told me that I should be the one to give the message to you guys this year. And I know that sounds crazy. And I thought it was crazy, so I went back to sleep and I didn't do anything about it. And all summer long, God just kept on me about it, and I just kept getting prompts that I was supposed to sit down and write what he told me. Um, and by that time, I'd forgotten it. And I just kept having every excuse. I was like, I'm not a public speaker. I'm not eloquent enough. I'm not qualified to do this. I'm busy. I was like, I'll do it later, Lord. But he just kept on me about it. And it's because he wanted this message to be spoken to you guys. And that's how awesome our God is. So after months and months of that happening, this past fall, he woke me up again in the middle of the night with all the same thoughts on my mind. And this time, I got out of bed and I wrote everything down. Um, so the words are really not my own, they're the Lord's, and they're just being spoken by me tonight. And I wasn't gonna share that part with you, but a friend encouraged me to, um, just to remind us that sometimes that happens to all of us. We feel called by God to do something, and it's scary, or we don't wanna do it, we don't think we're qualified, um, so we don't. We doubt we can handle it. Um, we don't feel like listening to him, or we say we're too busy. So hopefully after tonight, everyone will feel a little differently about that. And before I start, I just want to pray real quick. God, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for being persistent and for loving these students so much that you didn't give up on wanting this message heard by them tonight. And thank you for using me to do your will. May each person that's here tonight, Lord, hear what you want them to hear and remember in their hearts the message that you have specifically for them. Please fill this space with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Amen. Okay, first of all, I just want to say congrats to all of you who are about to graduate. Um, and I just want you to know that you're so ahead of the game, which is really awesome. Um, you're, you're ahead of your peers who aren't here tonight because you're already familiar with the topic that we're talking about, and it's God, and I've titled him Life's GPS. And you already know him in some capacity because you're here. Um, we heard about his goodness through the songs. We heard about his promises in the scripture readings. And maybe you already know that. Maybe you've known the Lord all your life. Maybe you've always gone to church. Or maybe someone invited you tonight. Or maybe your parents drug you here for another a photo op in your cap and gown, and you don't really want to be sitting out there right now. But whatever the reason you're here, God has a plan and a purpose for it, and there's a reason that you're here, because he wants you to hear this message. So I'm really glad that you're here, because you're already ahead of the game. And I say that because not everybody is. If you look around, a lot of your peers that you're going to be sitting next to at graduation on Sunday, they're not here tonight. Maybe they had to work, or they had family in town. Or maybe they don't know what they're missing. Maybe they don't believe in God, or they don't know that they can have a relationship with Him. Maybe they don't know what to believe, or maybe they think that this church stuff is crazy. And that was me at your age. Some of you out there already know this. But I was not, um, I never would have been at this religious event with a bunch of people that I called Jesus Freaks. Um, I was never told there's a God in heaven who loves me and who died on the cross for me and who rose again so that I could have life and have it to the fullest. And so I went through high school and college and part of my early adulthood on my own with no GPS to guide me. And let me tell you, I got lost. Not once, not twice, but many times. I went down bumpy roads some one-way streets I couldn't turn around on, even when I knew they were bad. 
Um, and looking back now, I wish that I would have been sitting in a seat like you are tonight to hear what you're hearing. Um, maybe I wouldn't have done some of the things I did or hung out with some of the people I hung out with or made some of the choices and mistakes that I made. So you guys are awesome because you're ahead of the game and I'm happy that you're here. And I'm excited for what the Lord's gonna do in your lives going forward and even in your life tonight. So who's ready to graduate? <laughs> Who is a little nervous about it or nervous about the future? I, I didn't think anybody would clap on that one. Um, maybe you didn't raise your hand on that second question, but I'm sure everyone is a little scared or nervous or just curious about the road ahead. But I'll tell you the secret to heading out into the big crazy world after you graduate is to always have your GPS with you. And your GPS for life is God knowing the Lord and letting him walk through your life with you. And here's what he wants you to know. He's your number one fan, followed closely by your, your parents. He's not against you. He's not hiding back in the shadows, watching you, just waiting for the moment you, you're going to make a mistake so he can jump out and say, ha ha, Kaya. He's not, um, he's also not happy or excited when you mess up or make a mistake. He's not like, yes, I knew it. I knew you were good. Actually, he's brokenhearted in those moments because he loves you so much and he doesn't think you're bad but he knows that the bad stuff or the action or behavior that you're doing he knows what that's going to cause for you he knows that it will make you sad or it will make you hurt or it might even alter the plan that he has for your life and if you haven't heard that before god has an amazing and perfect plan for you for each of you far better than anything you could ever imagine for yourselves in the bible in jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And I'm sure you've probably heard that or you're going to you're gonna see that on a grad card or something um, that you receive from graduation. And if you do, I just encourage you to keep that verse, keep that card, refer back to it because that's God's truth. He has a plan for you and it's a plan to prosper you, not to harm you. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, yeah, but what is that plan? I still don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm going to college. I have no idea what I'm going to major in. Or I'm heading off to boot camp, and I don't even know what's going to happen. Or I'm staying home and working a job, but I don't even like my job. And is that God's plan for me? And I don't know what God's plan for you guys is. I don't even always know what God's plan for me is at my age. But I do know that he has one, and so I can trust in that. And how I know that is that he told me that in the Bible. And his ways and his words in the Bible are always true. Um, and they're always better than my own. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So I'm excited for each of you because not only can you rest in the truth and trust that he has a plan for you, but you can take comfort in knowing that even though you have no idea what's going to happen, maybe you don't know what to major in, you don't know what job you're going to have, you don't know when you're going to ship out, your Father in Heaven does know, and he's going to be right there beside you, wherever you go and whatever decision you make. So you're so ahead of the game because you already know about taking life's GPS with you into the future. And all you have to do is ask him. And if you're thinking, well, I don't know how to do that, it's easy. You just tell God, I trust in you, Lord. And if you're not 100% sure that you do trust in him, that's okay. You can say, I want to trust in you. I want to have you in my life as I start this next um, phase of my young adulthood. So God, be with me every day and guide me where to go. And he will. Psalm 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Because let's face it, you might be scared or nervous. I mean, probably not tonight or in the next week because you still have celebrating to do. You still have graduation and graduation parties and project grad. But maybe in August, when you're unpacking your stuff in an unfamiliar room with a roommate that you didn't grow up knowing. Or maybe when you um, head off to boot camp and you have a drill sergeant yelling at you and you just want to go home. Um, and those are the moments that you're going to want God and you're going to want God's help. So, um, God says in the Bible, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. And that's 2 Timothy 1.7. And I refer back to that all the time. I've even texted it to some people in this room. 
Um, because you're going to have scary things that are going to happen that are going to cause you fear. But God doesn't want you to live in that fear. So all you have to do is say, be with me, Lord, when I'm afraid. When I don't know what's going to happen next. When I realize that my safe place that was next to high school or next to schools that you were blessed to be a part of, and maybe you didn't even realize you were blessed to be a part of it. But when that's over and you're left thinking, oh my gosh, what is next for me? That is when God's going to be with you if you ask him to be. But let me tell you, and some of you already know this all too well, just because you ask God to be with you in your life and you accept him in your heart doesn't mean that you're not going to have bumps along the road. Um, or potholes or detours or speed bumps or a cow in the middle of the road, which is a true story for me many times living in West Nixa. And of course, I'm really talking about stress and loss and hurt, pain and difficulties, um, all the things that we go through as humans. But God, the GPS of your life, is going to help you through all those bumps. He's going to walk beside you when it gets hard. And it will get hard. When those college classes are unbelievably difficult and you just want to drop them. Or when your drill sergeant's screaming at you. Or your annoying boss is really getting on your nerves. That's when God will be with you. He'll guide you through it. He'll give you strength. He'll give you comfort. He'll give you a way. He says all of those things in the Bible. He'll give you whatever you need to get through that situation. And notice that I said, get through. I didn't say take away. Because he's not going to take away your pain and your heartache. He's not going to take away um, your messy roommate or your fear of walking into your first college class or your first day on a new job or your first day at boot camp. He won't take those things away. And I said won't, not because he can't. He absolutely can. And sometimes I don't know why he doesn't. But other times I realize it's because we need to experience the things that um, – are in our lives in order to grow, in order to rely on him, in order to be able to help others. So for growth and patience and for perseverance, I can't go back in time and redo some of the things from my past as much as I wish that I could, but I can realize that God let me go through them for a reason and that I can help others through sharing my experiences. Romans 5 verse 3 through 5 says, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out onto our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So you can take comfort in that. So we'll be with you through it all. The GPS of your life wants to go with you into this next phase. So just ask him to. But then, grads, don't forget him. It's been kind of easy when you've been at home and if you're someone that goes to church, you know, your parents kind of encourage you and you just go as a family. But when you're out on your own, they're going to be your own decisions to make. And so I just encourage you to keep going to him. If you're lost and headed somewhere in your car, you don't just turn on Google Maps and then throw your phone in the back seat. You're surely going to get lost. You're going to end up on, you know, probably not your destination. You're going to make wrong turns. You're going to backtrack. You might even have a wreck. And in those moments, you're going to be thinking, why didn't I have my GPS up here right next to me? Well, you know, But you can remember, oh wait, I'm the driver. I can pull over. I can get my GPS. I can still look at it. AKA, I can still go to the Lord, even when I'm on the wrong road or I'm a little lost at this moment. All I have to do is ask him again, and he'll guide me and be with me again and again. So next Tuesday, or later this summer when you're at your job, or in August, when you are at the new place you're going to call home, don't forget your GPS for life. Keep turning to him and to his promises in the Bible. And if you don't have a Bible and you want one, you can come find one of the pastors or um, come find me after this service. We'd love to help you with that. Or a really easy way you can do it is just download the Bible in the App Store. I have it on my phone, and I, that's what I use every day. Um, and then I also want to tell you not only... Should you turn to God's word to help you? But turn to him through prayer. And if the thought of praying or um, talking to God intimidates you or you just don't really understand it, makes you nervous, I just want you to know that all that really means is talking to God. He wants to be your best friend, so you just talk to him like a friend. You don't have to be down on your knees. You don't have to have your arms crossed. You don't have to have your eyes closed. I talk to God all throughout my day. I start my day talking to him. Um, might just be if I know something's coming up during the day that's going to be stressful, I say, oh my gosh, Lord, I need your help today. I need your help to get through this. Um, 
maybe it's when I'm walking my dogs and I just see beautiful creation outside and I'm like, wow, thank you so much for this beautiful weather. Thank you that it's not raining today and that we have sun. Um, maybe I know a friend or a family member that's going through something hard. I'm just gonna talk to God about it. Um, so it really doesn't have to be hard. He just wants you to tell him all about your day, everything, like you would a friend. Tell him your fears, your failures, your joys, your frustrations, anything. Um, Philippians 4, or 6, 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So, grads, if you remember nothing else from my message tonight, I want you to remember that God loves you, and he wants to be the GPS of your life from here on out. And if you're still unsure how to make that happen, again, you can come talk to me or one of the pastors after and we'd love to help you. But I'm really proud of each of you. You're ahead of the game. You know about the Lord, which is awesome. And having God as your GPS is going to lead you to great places and to the best life. I believe that. I trust that. And I'm praying for that for each of you. And as you graduate and step out into the world, may the Lord remind you that he's for you. He's your number one fan. And may you always feel his presence in your life. May he always be your ultimate GPS. Congratulations. <laughs>